Hey guys, this is Joe Madalone, and today we're going to look at Phantom JS. Phantom JS is, uh, just like it says here on their website, a full web stack with no browser required. Uh, it's kind of hard to wrap your head around for at first, but basically it's a web browser that exists only in script. Uh, everything is managed through JavaScript, and you can do just about anything you can do in a web browser in Phantom JS. Uh, so what I want to show you today is uh, automation. So going to a website, logging in, or entering some information, filling out fields, clicking buttons, things of that nature. Uh, so what I've got here is a pretty trivial uh, .NET application and what it does is it generates a PDF. And let me just bring this up. So here's the folder where that application lives. And what you can see is if I go in and plug in some information it is going to generate a PDF for me. So here it is in the browser and here it is it's saved to disk uh, the PDF. So uh, what I want to do is automate going to this web address filling in those fields and submitting that form to generate the PDF. Uh, if you don't have uh, Phantom JS installed you can download it from the website or if you've got Chocolatey it's cinst Phantom JS uh, I've already got it installed in this system. Uh, what I'm going to do is jump to a test directory here and I'm going to make a new item. That's going to be local.js and that's going to be a file of course. Okay, so now I'm going to load up a uh, text editor. I'm using Sublime. You can use whatever you want. Uh, so the way PhantomJS works is uh, PhantomJS is the command and then you pass in the JavaScript that you want to run. Uh, in my instance, uh, I'm just going to kind of start building this up. Page equals new web page. Uh, I think there's actually a require statement for that, but I'm just using this one. And then uh, I'm going to need the system in order to pass in arguments uh, and that's that's pretty standard stuff if you know if you're familiar with any of this this is going to make sense to you and then I'm going to be passing in an address so I'm just going to go ahead and define that here uh, so first thing we need to make sure is that we actually have the arguments so uh, first thing I'm going to do is check the system dot args length I'm going to make sure that it is you know, I'm going to do the false here. So if it's less than two, uh, I'm just going to log that uh, you need an address. Ah, and then I'm going to call phantom, phantom exit, And that'll just exit the application if we have less than two arguments. And the arguments are relative to the phantom JS command. So the first argument is the... Uh, 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 JavaScript file that we're trying to load and uh, the second one is in our case going to be the URL that we want to get to uh, so let's see we're going to do else and uh, so this would mean that we did get a second argument and uh, so now we're just going to just so we can test this out log and run it and then we're also going to go ahead and exit Exit. Okay, so let's just give that a try really quick. Um, so we're in that directory with the with the local JS. So we're just going to call phantom JS local .js. and the first time we'll call it without the address. So we should get back the uh, you need an address uh, response. See, so we need an address. Now uh, let's get the address of my local app here. Copy that, paste that in, and so now it's it's we should so the expected response this time is going to be that I am running, and then it's just going to exit. So I called it, and uh, and I am running. So what we want to do here, uh, rather than just say I am running, is we actually want to do something again. We want to fill out those fields, and we want to. Uh, generate that PDF. So the first thing we're going to do is since we've got our uh, system arguments we're going to set address to system args uh, what's that going to be one uh, 
so that's fine. And that's obviously zero bound, and the length is zero bound plus one all the time in JavaScript. So uh, it is zero would be the local.js, and then one would be the URL that we're passing in. Um, so we've got our address, and then what we're going to use is this uh, new web page object we can call page.open. We pass in the address that we want to open, and then we have a callback function that's going to take the status, meaning uh, uh, the status being uh, uh, kind of like an XML HTTP request, getting that response text, the response status. Uh, in this case, the status we're looking for is success. So if we get that, then we can do some more stuff. If we don't, uh, we, we, we could technically write out an else and have some uh, additional uh, uh, messages going back to the user as far as, uh, you know, we couldn't connect, but we're going to skip that for right now. Now, the next thing in order to manipulate the page is page.evaluate. And this is going to let us mess with the page. Now, that's going to take a function, and in our function, we're going to tell it what we want to do. Now, you can actually inject uh, jQuery or some other library into this. I'm just going to do it old school. Uh, so document dot get element by ID. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's look at the page really quick. So our IDs are uh, first name, last name, email. And then we've got this button sender, and the ID of the form is frm. Okay, that should be easy enough. So first name. We're going to set the value there to Joe. And let's just copy that. And here we're going to say last. Whoa, oops. No idea. That was a uh, sublime error, not, uh, uh, not code. Okay. Alone. And then this one's going to be for the email. So something.com. That'll do. So that's email. And then last but not least, we need to submit that form. So I'm just going to say form dot submit. And technically we're good, uh, the, but we're going to run into an issue. We still need to exit the actual application. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And I'm kind of going to cheat here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to throw it in here into a set timeout. Uh, this is really, it's its not best practice, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to have it wait uh, 300 milliseconds and exit the application. Uh, I think we're looking good. I definitely have a typo right there. So uh, if we're lucky, if we get a success on the open address, uh, we will then jump into the page, set the first name to Joe, the last name to Matt alone, the email to Joe at something.com, and then we will submit that form. Uh, and then uh, between the page evaluate, or actually from the page open, we're going to wait 300 milliseconds, which is uh, approximately a third of a second, and then we're going to exit the application. Uh, I think we're looking good here, but we won't know until we try it. So. And one way we can monitor this, so we should, if this works, we should see a new PDF generated right there. So let's go ahead and run that again. And there's our new PDF. Actually, here, let me delete both of these. I don't know which one's new. Run that one more time. And there's our PDF. So let's load that up. And there we go. Uh, and so obviously you can see you could do a lot of automation with this. I could be passing in uh, a JSON object uh, with multiple inputs and generating all sorts of PDFs. Uh, so this is a great way to get started with PhantomJS and see some of the power in terms of automation. Uh, you can see, you know, there's a lot you could do here. I, I'm personally a data scraper from way back, so PhantomJS uh, excites me a lot in terms of uh, just being able to do some of the things that used to be more complicated. Uh, you can really jump in there. You've got a full browser, and you can automate the hell out of all sorts of items. So there you go, Phantom JS.